when we say the invoke activities, what actually the invoke activities? Calling of a different functions inside the function. So, yeah, which means like this invoke activities will provide the functionality for us to call a different functions. Like, what are the different activities we have? Invoke workflow file. Code. Invoke method. Invoke any programming language, like for example, for, for instance, we are taking Python. Okay. So these are the different invoke activities we have in UI. Like you can call the Java, you can call some different functions as well. Okay. <coughs> And invoke workflow file is to call a workflow file, which is of dot xml. Like uh, we are creating main file, right? So if you come here, this is dot jaml. This is one workflow file, and we can call another workflow file inside of this workflow file. And invoke code is to call vb or C sharp code inside workflow file. Okay. And this is an activity. And here calling a dot net method inside the workflow file. And this is calling Python program inside workflow. So these are the different activities we have. And here why see in work workflow file is to like build your drag and drop functions in a different flow. And we'll be calling it. And why do we need to have it? Why do we need to have it? Reusability and readability, maintainability. So, the reason why we will be building multiple works. So the reason why we will be building multiple workflow files and calling is <coughs> we need to have a readability, reusability. Let us suppose the same function we might require at multiple places. So we will build that workflow and then we will call that workflow in a different workflows. Okay. And the readability. It means like the better organization of your code so that like it will be easy for someone to understand because in case if you want to if you are having a activities of thousand or two like uh, let us assume you may need to have a thousand of activities to automate your process so in case if you are writing all in a single file then it will not look good and it will be hard for someone to understand right so and this will provide that and maintainability it will be easy to maintain as you can read the code and understand the code easily then it will be easy for you to maintain the code as well. correct and example can we say take some examples of reusability login of an application. We may need to have this in multiple places. In case if any exception occur, we will be using logout. 
and then we may need to log in. So multiple times instead of writing all this login activities one after the other multiple times in case if we can have it as a separate workflow file, it will be easy for us to call that workflow file. So that is the advantage of this workflow file. An invoke code. Why do we need to have an invoke code? There will be some functionalities. There will be some functionalities. Which we may not able to achieve with existing activities. So in that case, we will be writing our C sharp code to do our actions or to achieve our functionality. So for that, we need invoke code and invoke method. The same will be applicable to the invoke method also. But what is the difference? When to call only one method. But here you can have multiple methods can be utilized. OK. And invoke Python, there might be uh, like some scenarios where like you don't have the capabilities in the C chart itself directly or uh, you are not sure like how we can implement that in C sharp and you know that like it is possible with Python, then we will be using the Python. Uh, for example, for instance, you can say. Um, reading of data extraction from images or pdf or semi semi structure then the python will be much more useful than c sharp okay and for all this like when you are calling any uh, functions What is the prerequisite? Arguments. Because you need to pass the values from one function to the other. That can happen with arguments. And this is the only difference between this is the only difference between variables and arguments. So there is no other difference. Because the type are same, default will be same. Okay. Instead of scope, we will have direction. When you compare with the variables. OK, so let us take like because data types are same and the default values. Are same. And scope. In place of scope, we will be using direction, so let us understand the directions. In in out in or out. So these three are the directions we have, and in is to pass the values to the invoked function or workflow. Even it will be there for invoke code also, but we call them as a parameters. The def there is no difference. It is same. OK, to pass the values to the invoked. Workflow. From. Workflow where it was called. So to pass the values to that. Whatever the workflow we are going to invoke. There we will be 
using in arguments and default value will be supported because you are giving it as an input. This is to get the value from the invoke workflow to the workflow where it was called or invoked and this default value will not be supported because it's an output of the function whatever you are executing it so you cannot have a default value for an output for input you can have a default but output you cannot have a default and in or an out is to pass the value and get the updated value so these are the three different arguments we will be having and let us see first this in work workflow and all. So this is my main workflow, OK? And I go with. So I would I'll require like I want to fill this application and I'll click on submit. OK. And I want to get whether it is approved or not. And what is the interest rate? OK. So we need to have all these information as an input. And once we submit that, we need to have whether it is approved or not. And also the rate of interest as an out arguments. OK. Let us do that. So this is my main function. And I want to create a new sequence. Apply for loan. Let me rename it. Okay. Now. Indicate it on screen. Extension need to enable extensions. Where is the extensions? Here it is extensions, manage extensions. And I just need to enable this. Let us indicate that here. Now it is enabled. And now I need to type into the details, right? For here, indicate on this email. So we are individually doing that, right? So let us find some a different way of how we can make a bit more this thing. Let me go to object repository. Let us try to build it in a different way. Delete this. Let me add an application. UI bank application. Okay. 
and inside that I can add a screen, create a screen. Open application. Which I can indicate on the screen. This is a screen. Create a screen. And now here I want to capture the elements. I can go with the create and one after the other I can create. But let us go to the capture the elements and click on capture all elements. See this. We select all, select all, cancel, capture all elements. So whatever is got highlighted, and these are like in case if you want to capture, you can click on select all so that even these will also be captured and we doesn't require all this, right? So we just need these elements. And. Is it possible for me to go down? No. And this is not required. Capture. One element is captured, second element is captured, third element is captured. Fourth element, fifth element is captured. Sixth element is captured. One duplicate element added. So not added. OK, fine. Five and six are valid elements. Click on OK. So this is. Email address. This amount requested. This is loan term. This is currently year. And this is age. So we got all. Right. You could be able to get each and every element of it. And what I was missing is this one submit button, right? So for now, we'll keep this all save and continue. Now I want to capture one more element. So I'll go here. It will try to capture everything. I'll simply click on deselect all. And I'll select this and capture. So my one submit loan application button is also captured. So now I'll click on save. If you see right now I got all the elements. What I can do right now is I can just use this use application browser and now it is not necessary for me to go to each and everything. I can just drag and drop here. And I need type into right type into and I want to go for a. Email address there it is. I'll use the type into again and what I want to use loan amount requested. I can have go for one more type into. And loan term. It's not type into I guess select item. Loan term. So now you can select the year from here. And now I want to give current yearly salary. Now I want to type into age. And now I need to go on it, click right. So now all my actions are done. Now I just need to pass the values. So this is the advantage of modern design and the object repository. See how easy to capture the elements and by default you can just pass it. OK. And now we what we require we need an email address, right? So, so through object through it means through object. Sorry, repository, we can we can basically capture in one shot, right? path. Yes, yes. Yes. And it, it is also useful for the reusable component as well, right? Object repository. Yes, yes. I can, uh, yeah, I can publish this to the as a package. See here. Okay. okay. Extract as UI library project. Mm -hmm. We can publish it as a UI library, and you can import this at anywhere. Correct. So here, okay. can we uh, handle dynamic elements? And here, I need the where input. Uh, sorry. Dynamic elements. Can we handle here? Yes, dynamic elements also we can handle. OK. 
let me go here the object repository you can go to this edit descriptor so you got these selectors right so you can modify these selectors you can open that so whatever we are going to do in normal ways right in the, by by directly identifying so all these things you can do it here on cancel so we need to pass in the input values so here it is first let us create a variables okay and see just remember that one more thing we need to keep in mind best practice it is prefix with the direction for prefix with the direction for argument names so let us suppose in case if you want to go pass the email as an input in underscore email address camel see this is camel case right camel casing and we need to have in underscore and if it is out out underscore in case of address in or out io underscore this is the format we generally follow and for data tables in underscore dt out underscore dt io underscore dt is the standard naming convention we generally follow okay so first let us create them as in our variables let us we can convert them to the arguments in underscore email is in underscore loan amount Tom underscore yearly income in underscore is so now you got all these as variables. So what you can do is you can just select everything. Right click, convert to arguments. Now everything is converted to in arguments. In case if something is there, you can just convert it to the out argument. Okay, now I got everything done, right? But here there is a change. So how you want this page? Do you want to open this page and close the page? So here in the properties we have closure open. See when you are working with the modern design, you need to be very careful close open. So close here in this case, I don't want to close because I want to perform some more actions in the next page. OK, and open if not open in case if this was not open. So we want to go with that and here hardware events or simulate. So whatever like we have seen, right? The properties type into properties and all that we can change. Let us keep it as hardware events for now and now once you fill all the details and click on submit i want to have something uh, data right for now what i want to do is i'll invoke this workflow to invoke the workflow you can even use the invoke workflow for file activity or else you can directly drag and drop this so this will be done now click on this now i can pass the values here so let me see amount thousand loan term five years yearly income let us say one lakh yes 21 so you can pass a variable also here these also okay hard coded values and variables also that that will be acceptable so let us run this file from the main. So 
submission is done. And I got this right. Now we got this. So here I'll use I need to go for to the object repository. And this page is done. I want to add one more screen. Loan status page. Indicate. Create the screen. Okay. okay. Here, I want to edit this descriptor. Title is okay. But here, the browser URL, right? This may change, right? So here, I'll just put star. Click on okay. Now I got this, and now I want to capture elements. Capture all elements. So whatever I want, I'm not getting it. OK, I want to get the loan ID. I want to get the rate and I want to see whether it is approved or not. So first I need to check whether it is approved or not. Only if it is approved, then only I want to get this rate and this loan ID also. So it is not capturing it directly. So in that case, what we will do is. We'll take this. Yes, if the element is available with congrats, I'll consider that the loan is approved. And after that, this is fine. I want to get this value also. I don't want the name to be available, so I want to remove this. Let us go to the strict selector if it is possible. Yes, strict selector is possible. I want to remove the fuzzy. OK. And here I'm not having this rate value, right? So this is fine. Save. And I want to get this also. We will go with the strict selector. Not with the fuzzy. And let me have this as an anchor. It's done now. Save and continue. Save. So I got all right. And now what I need to have is. I need to have. Use application or a browser. The object repository I need to bring this to now. See. The URL is modified. Now it will work. And here in the properties. Open never because it will be always. And I want to close this. Okay. And here. In case if this congrats is available, then I want to get these values. Element. Check element. The cap status. Object. Congrats. Okay. And if it is available, I will use the get text. I'll get one more get text. The object repository. I'll get the ID. I'll get the red. And here. I want to get the loan status also as an out. Okay, let us create the out documents here. Out. Loan status. Out. Rate, right? What is the. Um, 
interest rate. So for these two, it will be out. See, there is property which I never used and I doesn't even know. <laughs> So you can take an assign activity. Loan status. Okay. Approved. Rejected. Here it is rate. This loan ID. OK, so you got it. See the names are not looking good, right? It is a bit hard for us to understand. What we will do is. Okay. One ID name sheet needs to be changed. Eh? Okay, we'll change it from here. One ID. The rest, right? So now we got everything. So here we got a new variables out. Your loan status. STR interest rate. STR loan ID. Let us take a condition. If STR loan status approved. Then wanna display STR loan ID STR interest rate. <laughs> Let us run this. Okay. And let us change some values here. I know it was it closed, right? It got closed. Let us see. <laughs> so you won't have the element, so it will wait for a while and it will. So it's not printing any value because it's not approved. OK. So this is how we can leverage the arguments and invoke workflow file. And even we can separate these two out also. So let us suppose 
if you want to separate these two also, that can be possible. You can just click on this, extract as a workflow, clone status space, create. Now it's a separate. And we have out arguments, which are supposed to be converted to out. So close this and apply for the loan. If you see here, get all this, you can just pass in. So generally what will happen is, uh, by in case if you have in arguments, right, automatically those will be converted. So let me take this interest rate. Out loan ID. So here till his place, okay, fine. Let us do one thing. Let us convert this also as a one more workflow. And save it. If you see here, right? Automatically all the in arguments are mapped. So this is how even you can separate the existing workflow also as separate workflow. Some sequence, if you want to separate it as a separate workflow, you can just simply directly right click. Extract, a, extract as a workflow. That's it. So any queries guys still now? Are we clear? So we should basically put the try catch block right in the main mean 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 workflow as well, right? See, yeah, of course. See, and um, almost wherever you think that right, like there might be a possibility of an exception, then we need to keep the try catch. But here I'm just like uh, focusing on like invoking workflows and passing of the arguments. But when we are building the project for almost each and every sequence, we try to have a try catch to get the clear information where we got an error. Mm -hmm. So are we clear with this, guys? Yes, but yeah. Have any questions? Okay. In case if you are fine, right? We can continue a bit more. We'll take a break for five to ten minutes and see it will not take much time. I'll just explain very high level for all the other activities because in very rare cases, we will be using this invoke code and invoke Python. So I'll explain how to use this. And you can give your own try because why I want you to try on this is there might be a possibility that they will ask you to in use the JavaScript or they may ask you to use a call the Selenium because nowadays what is happening is because of this test suite, right? People are asking to invoke the Selenium. So for that, like you need to uh, read the activities guide and you should be able to perform it. So this I will explain you on with uh, a sample and you give a try at your place and the invoke method I'll explain because this may be required in some cases and this will be with a very small example. I'll cover this invoke code. OK, but this, sure. this I'll tell you like how generally I do. OK. So let us break for 10 minutes and then we will come back, okay? Sure.
लगाइस कंफर्म गाइस इफ यू आर इफ आर ऑल ऑल आर अवेलेबल या 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 पार्ट या रेगुलर है ओके सो लेट मी पुट द यूज केस हियर लेट मी क्रिएट अ न्यू सीक्वेंस एक्सट्रैक्ट जिप फाइल ओके सो व्हाट आई वांट टू डू इज आई वांट टू एक्सट्रैक्ट दिस टू अ नॉर्मल फोल्डर लाइक दिस so now what i can do is i'll go to google isha so this is the stream they are mentioning and let us go where it worked we are saying that it worked okay so we need to pass two arguments where to extract and where is the zip file okay and we need to have this extract to directory this is the method okay so let us go here and use invoke method let us keep it as null and method name will copy from here and the target object i can use system dot i o i guess or null i guess not pretty sure but let us try to do this okay in the target object I need to have it. This first one is the zip file path. where i want to extract the folder name fix that so what i have done is in this code whatever i have above this before this method that i gave it as a target type and this as a method name and i passed two arguments first first argument is zip file path second argument is where to extract now let us run this file and let us go to the downloads and see here it is just got extracted so in case if you are not having some functional activities and where you can do with one method so you can use this invoke method okay this is how we use the invoke method let us go to invoke code i'll take invoke code edit arguments here you can pass the in argument and out arguments i can say input string i'll pass some
okay output string direction is out updated value okay. edit code here i can say input string So let me use a log message here. So what we done? So here, what we have done? Like uh, we we updated the input and then we assigned it. So, but we will get to know one thing, like when you are writing some methods and all, okay? So how it works and how we can import the namespaces. In programming language, right, we will be importing the namespaces. Example, you can see here. These we will be doing from here, imports, okay? Let us try to do one thing. Not pretty sure whether we can do this or not. Zip file path and extracted file path. Let us take this. Both are as input. OK. And let me write this. Inside of this code. Now what I will do is I'll just go here. Let me come here, cancel. To the downloads, delete this, run this file. It's got extract. So, in this way, we can use invoke code also. And here we can write multiple methods also line by line in case if we have something to do with here we can extract only with the method. So clear or. See here it can be of webinar.net or a shop dot. It is up to us which we want to write the code. So are we clear with these two guys invoke code and invoke method? Guys, there? Yes, Pa. Yeah. So you are clear, right? Yeah. Okay. Now let us see for the Python. Okay. For that, you need to install Python activities. Install, save.
looks like it is taking time and uh, some error also came let me do one thing let me close it off Looks like it's taking a lot of time, man. It will take a lot of time, but I'll cover Python somewhere. Okay.